Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into another disturbing case that reminds us how fragile life can be. One moment, you're surrounded by laughter and loved ones, and the next, everything changes in the blink of an eye. Chaos erupts and tragedy strikes, leaving behind a horrific scene that feels more like a nightmare than reality. Life is precious, but death can be sudden, brutal, and terrifying. This case reflects unimaginable pain and loss. Our deepest sympathies go out to the Ortega family and all those affected. Earlier this morning, investigators found the last of the victims, struggling through the wreckage of a home reduced to rubble by a fire. No one could have imagined such horror. Christmas should be a time of joy, but in 2008, the town of Covina, California, experienced a nightmare. During a family Christmas Eve party, gunshots rang out and an arson fire engulfed the home. Nine people lost their lives, leaving a community in shock and countless unanswered questions. Extremely unusual and very shocking. Uh, it's just not something we see here at any time of the year, especially during Christmas. Christmases were like, you know, just that special time of the year. It meant so much to them. And it's almost like he planned it, you know, for him to come and uh, do this on such a special night. He was never like this. I, I'm shocked. I would never picture in my right mind he would ever do something to a family. I'm just devastated. What led to such a horrific act? The Ortega family had gathered for a Christmas Eve celebration, enjoying a peaceful evening at home. In the dining room, Joe Ortega, his wife of 53 years and their children, were playing a game of cards after dinner while the grandchildren played outside. Upstairs, their 17-year-old grandson was on the computer. Everything seemed perfect until the knock on the door came. An eight-year-old girl, thrilled to see Santa Claus, opened the door only for the nightmare to begin. The man in the Santa suit was armed, and in an instant, he shot her and began attacking the rest of the family. What followed was sheer chaos. Two uncles tried to protect their family but were shot down as well. Others hid under tables, but the gunman was relentless. He was Bruce Jeffrey Pardo, the ex-husband of one of the Ortega daughters, and he had come with revenge in mind. He didn't stop at gunfire. He used a homemade flamethrower to ignite the house, trapping the victims in an inferno that took firefighters over an hour and a half to extinguish. The flames were so intense that identifying the victims became nearly impossible. Investigators had to rely on dental and medical records to piece together what happened that night. Opened a gift-wrapped package, a pressurized tank that police say Pardo had rigged up to blast a mixture of race car fuel all over the house. Pardo was uh, severely injured during that explosion. He suffered third-degree burns on both arms. It also appears that the uh, Santa Claus suit that he was wearing did melt onto his body. Bruce had killed nine people, including Joe and his wife, four of their children, two daughters-in-law, and even their 17-year-old grandson. It was a scene of devastation that no one could have foreseen. Around 25 to 30 people had been at the party, but only a few survived. Some of the survivors later shared the terrifying moments when they tried to flee or hide from Bruce, but the chaos made it almost impossible. One family member recalled how Bruce started shooting as soon as he arrived. Two of the Ortega sons, James and Charles, were among the first to be shot. Despite their injuries, they tried to fight back, but it was too late. The gunman was unstoppable. Letitia, one of the surviving daughters, managed to hide under a table and called 911. Her daughter had been shot in the face, and despite the chaos, she provided the dispatcher with the information needed. He's shooting. He's shooting. What's your address? Ma'am, ma'am, I understand. I need to know your address. When he shot, I heard the shots, and we they were like hoppers, and I wasn't sure what it was, so we all. Everyone started panicking and running, so we all dove under the dining room. Some of us dove, some of us left. I don't know. My daughter has been shot. She was shot in the face on the side, and she's bleeding. I know. I, I let the officers know. The officers are making sure it's safe for the paramedics. I need a bandage, please. Please come immediately. Come on, I'm in your house. Come immediately. I don't know who else is alive. I, I know, I know, ma'am. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? My whole family, there's 30 people, 25 people. I know, I know. This case is a stark reminder that even during the happiest moments, tragedy can strike when you least expect it. The Covina massacre left scars not only on the Ortega family, but on an entire community, forever changing the way they view the holidays. Share your views in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, 
and ring the notification bell for more discussions on true crime.